Methicillin-resistant staphylococci are some of the most notorious and well-known superbugs, and they've developed a reputation as being some of our nastiest uh, monsters in infectious disease to deal with. But what exactly are these organisms? What is the mechanism of resistance? And how does that impact your prescribing decisions as a veterinarian or a physician? First, when we're talking about methicillin resistant staph, I think there's some abbreviations that are important to define. First, we have MRSA, methicillin resistant staph aureus. Another species of staphylococcus, Staphylococcus pseudintermedius, is of great importance to veterinary medicine and is also frequently methicillin resistant. Coagulase negative species can also be methicillin resistant although these organisms are oftentimes considered to be of lower pathogenic potential than the coagulase positive species. When discussing methicillin resistance, what we're really referring to is resistance to the beta-lactam type antimicrobials, so drugs like penicillin. And as you can see from this figure on the right, our beta-lactams are drugs which interfere with cell wall synthesis by preventing peptidoglycan cross-linking in the cell wall. When considering beta-lactam-resistant staphylococci, there's three different phenotypes that I think are relevant when trying to understand methicillin resistance. First are our wild-type strains. These are susceptible to penicillins, and so when we expose them to amoxicillin, the amoxicillin is able to kill the organism. Next, we have penicillin-resistant staphylococci, which when we expose them to that same amoxicillin, these organisms produce a beta-lactamase, a degradative enzyme called a penicillinase, or BLAZ, which is able to degrade our amoxicillin and prevent it from acting on the cell. Fortunately, we do have an effective countermeasure against this BLAZ beta-lactamase. Again, we expose them to amoxicillin, the BLAZ beta lactamase is produced, which we can inhibit with drugs like clavulanic acid, a beta lactamase inhibitor. This binds up the beta lactamase and prevents it from degrading our drug, which is then able to go on and inhibit the growth of our bacteria. In the case of methicillin resistant staph, the situation is somewhat different. Our normal cell wall is composed of penicillin binding proteins, but among methicillin resistant strains, the MEK-A gene encodes an altered penicillin binding protein, which has a very low binding affinity for beta-lactam type drugs. So when we treat with a drug like amoxicillin, it doesn't recognize its target and simply doesn't have any activity. Similarly, clavulanic acid has nothing to bind to, and so beta-lactamase inhibitors do not restore susceptibility among methicillin resistant staph the same way that they do among BLAZ producers. Methicillin resistance is more than just resistance to methicillin. In fact, what we're referring to is resistance to all beta-lactam drugs. So all of our penicillins, our cephalosporins, and carbapenems, including our penicillins with beta-lactamase inhibitors. Remember, resistance is not due to the production of a beta-lactamase, it's due to altered penicillin binding proteins in the cell wall, and so clavulanic acid will have no impact on that. These strains are frequently multi-drug resistant, and so not only does the clinician need to use a class of drugs other than the beta-lactams, um, but treatment options may be severely limited. So how do we detect methicillin resistance? How do we know that that's what we're dealing with? Well, our first clue is going to be phenotypic resistance. For Staph aureus, we can use either cefoxitin or oxicillin resistance as a proxy for MRSA. These are really good indicator drugs. In the case of Staph pseudintermedius, only oxicillin reliably predicts the presence of the MEK-A gene. Once we have an isolate that we suspect is being methicillin resistant, we can go looking for the gene itself. So we can detect MEK-A by PCR, as you can see in this image here of a, a gel. And then finally, we can detect the actual altered penicillin binding proteins in the cell wall using a latex agglutination assay, as you can see here on the bottom. So I hope this brief description of methicillin resistance, how it works, and how it impacts your prescribing decisions was helpful. 
And if you have any questions, put them in the comment section below.